Welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium with C Sharp .NET. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about using extension methods of C Sharp in custom methods. If you remember in our last lecture, while we we're trying to extend our existing custom methods, we did really have to perform some more operation within our caller code to pass the actual locator and then the value that we wanted to perform on that. And also we were calling the actual Selenium custom method class each and every time to call the static member of it, which was kind of pain as well. Now, our end goal of this particular lecture is gonna look something like this. We want to simplify the code which we are writing within our login method, which was Selenium custom methods dot enter text that we tried to perform over here for the username, something like this, and for the password, and then for the click to this line of code. You can see that this is more readable, right? Like it just says txt username dot enter text, and then txt password dot enter text, and then btn login dot click. How is this possible? Like how can we even not have all these selenium custom methods dot enter text method, and we can just use the enter text method alone? How is this even possible? Well, that is possible because C Sharp has got what is called as an extension methods. Extension methods enables you to add methods to existing type without you creating a new derived type, recompiling or otherwise modifying the original type. So for example, if we are going to be adding a method to the iWeb element type that we have, as you know, the index that we try to perform, it always performs the operation on the iWeb element. As you know, that's this txt username is also iWeb element. And if I want to perform or write a method for the iWeb element interface, I need to do what is called as modifying the source code of Selenium, or I need to recompile the source code of the Selenium or create a new derived type of the iWeb element interface. I don't have to do any of these things using the extension methods capability of C Sharp because using extension method, we can directly add methods to an existing type without doing all these operations, which is amazing. And extension methods are a static method as well. They were called as if they were instance methods of the existing type or the extended type. So this is how we are actually gonna be doing. Well, as that said, extension methods has got some more rules in order to be adding these operations in it. The first one is the class needs to be a static access specifier. I mean, the Selenium custom methods class needs to be a static class. And the methods that we are trying to perform the operation on should also be static, which is obviously static in our case, so we don't have to worry about it. And third most important rules is that the type that is going to be extended should be called as the first parameter of the method with a prefix of this keyword. So in our case, we are trying to extend the I web element type and we wanted to extend this particular type. So this is going to be the first parameter of this method and it should be prefixed with a, this keyword as you can see over here. So this is the most important thing or important rules that we need to follow. So these are the three most important rules that we need to be following in order to work with the extension methods of Selenium. So let's see how we can achieve all these operations in much, much easier way. And once again, I would highly recommend you to go through some readings of the extension method in C Sharp. I have already covered that in my C Sharp basics like eight years before uh, in Selenium, or there is a C Sharp for automation testing video series in our YouTube channel. So please go ahead and watch there like how to work with extension methods of C Sharp, which is gonna be very, very helpful so that you can get more idea about it. And now again, I'm gonna to touch base on all these things over here in this particular video as well, but going through those videos will be more helpful. Well, as that said, I'm gonna to go to our actual test code and let's start modifying everything from the scratch. Well, as you can see over here, we have got this Selenium custom method dot enter text dot txt username, and then we pass the uh, username over here. It is kind of good, but still it is painful, right? I mean, you gotta be doing quite a lot of operation. Instead of you doing all these things, some people just think that, you know what, Karthik, even doing all these things, I'm better off with this particular operation itself, like send keys operation itself. Like I can just pass the username over here. And if you say like, I want to do perform a clear operation before it, why not? I can just use the txt username dot clear over here and then I can perform these operations this is because this is so much good than compared to calling all these 
Selenium custom methods dot Selenium custom methods dot index everywhere. It's kind of pain, right? So that is the reason why we are going to detour all the way to the C sharp extension method operation within our Selenium custom method. So as you know, the first and foremost rules that we need to follow for the extension method is the class needs to be a static access specifier. As you can see at the moment, our Selenium custom methods class is not a static class. So we gotta be changing it to static. That's the first and foremost thing that we need to do. Awesome. And the second thing is the methods need to be static, which is obvious in our case as a static method. And third most important rules is, as you know, within our login method, if I wanted to extend our I web element type, which is this one, I need to make this as the first parameter and I need to use a this keyword. So the idea here is I wanted to use the method that I have written, like the enter text, something like this. And I need to pass the username, something like this, but I can't do it at the moment because you can see that it is not possible at all. And the way that is going to happen in reality is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add a, this keyword for this enter text. The moment I do this, you will notice that within over here in my login page, this issue or the scrolly line that we had before is completely gone, which is awesome. So this is already working. And you can see that once I do this, the line number 39 is still legal. I mean, you can even call the same enter text method in your old way as well. But as you can see now, this particular enter text method is an extension method. So you don't necessarily have to use the custom class and then call the extension method like that. You can now directly call the extension method. If you hit dot on an I web element type, you will notice that we also got a enter text method automatically added. This was not the case before, right? Like you don't see your method sitting within the I web element interface because that is not something is available. But now you have just appended it or added to the existing type by just making an extension method of enter text. So if you don't really have an extension method of the drop down selection or something like that. And now if I go back to our extension method over here and let's say if I'm going to make the select drop down by text as this and the value as this and the multi select with this keyword and get the list selected as this over here. And if I go back to the login page and if I hit dot the txt username, you will notice that we also get get all selected list, which is automatically appended over here. And we also get multi select elements, select drop down by text, select drop down by value. This is magic, right? You have just added a method to the existing I web element type without performing any of the recompilation or modifying the source code, but it just extended it. That's the reason why it is called as extension methods. Awesome. Well, this is done and now I can happily do the exact same thing for my rest of the code as well. So I can just get rid of these and Guess what? The most important thing that you should have asked is I didn't pass the I web element over here once again because it is extending the I web element here already. You don't have necessarily pass in the first parameter as the I web element over here, like how it is done. So this actual parameter doesn't necessarily have to be passed. You just have to pass the values alone. And in this case, for the inner text, you don't necessarily have to pass the this of I web element type because you are necessarily extending it already. All you have to do is just pass the string of text. So you have did the exact same thing, txt username, inner text, and you have passed the username alone. And same thing, we can do that for the txt password, and then I can say enter text, and I can just pass the text of string. And do you see that the method doesn't tell you to pass the iweb element, rather it just asks you to pass the string of text alone, which is the password. Now this line is also obviously not needed. And for the submit, I can now just go and I can say like probably because you're not differentiate between the types of the extension method versus the actual type. I'm just going to say click element and I'm going to say submit element 
so that it's going to be a bit more clearer and then i can just say btn login dot submit and there is a submit and oh you see that there is only submit method there is no submit element method i think the reason why is because i have not added the this keyword so let me add the this over here and let me also add a this keyword over here so now if i go back to our login page we will hit control space do you see that we have extension method of submit element which is cool and similarly i can get rid of these line into super simple login or maybe guess what visual studio is even more intelligent enough to tell me that you can do a control dot and you can change it to click element do you see you can do that or you can just change based on our login link dot click element method just this one now you see that our code is even more readable and this is the perfect way of writing your actual extension methods for the custom selenium control so now your code is super readable and it's in fact it's more and more like an actual library because this is the code which is going to be very very helpful for you to perform all the operation in future as well and now i'm going to go and do a bit of code cleanup because we have so many unnecessary usings you can either remove this using by hitting control dot over here and remove the unnecessary using or hit this brush symbol which is over here it's going to do all the cleanup for you over here so this is the way that we can use the c sharps extension method to extend our selenium custom method that we have written so far meet you in our next lecture